Hello, my friends. Sometimes, after finishing your game, you might feel like something is still missing. So today, I want to talk about how to improve your game from this to this in just three easy steps. Step one: We are going to create a blink shader. Step two: We are going to make the camera shake. And step three. We are going to add some particles. Before we get started, I want to briefly mention that I have just finished my 2D Godot course. In this course, I'll show you how to create a 2D Godot game from scratch with high-quality game assets. So please check out the coupon link in the comment below if you're interested. First, let's select the animated sprite 2D node and create a new shader material. Then let's create a new shader file. Make sure the mode is canvas item. Click on the shader file again to open the shader editor. Let's remove the light function and the vertex function, since we don't need them. Let's create a new back four parameter called blink color. We'll see the parameter shows up in the editor once we finish the line, but it's represented as four separate values. Let's add source color at the end, so we can set this parameter to a color directly in the editor. Let's set it to white. Next, let's declare a float variable called blink intensity. Let's set its default value to zero. We can see that the new parameter also shows up in the editor. Next, let's declare a back four variable called color in the fragment function. And we use the texture function to sample the current sprite 2D texture of the enemy and store it in color. Next, we use the mix function to mix the enemy sprite 2D texture and the blink color together. And we use blink intensity as the mix value. Finally, we need to set the built-in variable color to the mix color. Otherwise, nothing is going to happen. Now, we can set the blink intensity to 1. The entire enemy sprite becomes white. We can fix this by multiplying the blink intensity by the alpha value of the original enemy sprite. Now the shader is working as expected. And we're done here with the shader code. Let's move to the enemy script to trigger the blink effect. Here, I have this apply damage function. This function will be called when the enemy is hit by a bullet. So we just need to write the code in it. But first, let's hold the control key and drag the animated sprite 2D node into the script, since we need access to the material property of this node. Next, I'm going to create a new function called setShader Blink Intensity. Let's add an input parameter called new value and set its type to float. In the function, let's get the material property of the animated sprite 2D node and call the setShader parameter function on it. Let's pass in the name of the blink intensity parameter. Then we set it to new value.
Next, let's remove the path line in the apply damage function. Then we create a twin and store it in a new variable. We are going to use this twin to animate the blink intensity parameter. We call the twin method function on the twin, then pass in the name of the set shader blink intensity function. The second parameter is the start value. Let's set it to 1.0, so the enemy blinks white when it's damaged. The third parameter is the end value. Let's set it to 0. And the last parameter is the duration of the twin animation. Let's set it to 0.5 seconds. All right, we are finished. Let's run the game. Great, now the enemy blinks when it's hit by a bullet. But there is a problem. Let me duplicate a new enemy first. The two enemies blink at the same time. To solve this problem, you need to enable local to scene under the material section and convert the enemy into a scene file. Then you can reuse the enemy scene and the shader will work expected. Step two, we are going to make the camera shake. Let's go back to the enemy script to add two variables at the top. The first one is to hold onto the camera 2D node. The second one is a noise map. And we are going to get data out of it and use the data to shake the camera. Next, let's initiate the variables in the ready function. First, we get the camera node using the get node function. The path is where the camera 2D node is located in my scene. You should replace the path with your own. Then let's just initiate the noise map variable. That's it. Next. Let's create a new function called start camera shake with a float input parameter called intensity. In the function, let's declare a variable called camera offset then get the float value from the noise map and store the return value in it. Notice that we use the getNoise1D function to get the noise value at the given x coordinate. And we use the time passed since the game started as the x coordinate of the noise value, so the return value changes over time. Also, we multiply the result by intensity, so the final offset value will scale down as intensity goes down. The last thing to do here is to set the x and y components of the offset property of the camera 2D node to the camera offset variable. This will move the camera slightly to create the shake effect. All right, now let's go to the apply damage function. This function gets called whenever the enemy is hit by a bullet. Let's create a new tune and call it camera tween. Then let's create a method tweener. And the function we call here is the start camera shake function that we just created. Then the next parameter is 
which means when the star camera shake function is first called, the intensity parameter will be 5.0, and the end value for intensity is 1.0. The last parameter here is the duration of the twin. Let's put 0.5 here, so the camera shake effect will last for 0.5 seconds. Alright, we're all done. Let's run a game to test. Great, now you know how to make the camera shake. And step 3, we are going to add some particles. Alright, let's add a GPU particle to the node. Select the new node and create a new particle process material. We can see that the particles appear once we have the process material. Let's increase the amount of the particles to 20. Then expand the process material to tweak the parameters. First, let's change the spawn shape from point to sphere and increase the radius of the sphere to around 25. We want the particles to fly to the right, since the bullet's impact will be coming from the left. So let's expand velocity and set direction to 0.5 minus 0.5, which means the particles will tend to move in the 45 degree direction. But for now, nothing changes. That's because the initial velocity is still zero. Let's increase the initial velocity to 200, 400. Next, let's expand accelerations and set damping to 100, 800, so the particles will slow down. Let's also increase gravity to 700, so the particles fall down faster. Let's add some randomness to the size by setting the skill max to 3. Next, we want the particles to disappear naturally. So let's go to color curves and add a new gradient texture 1D. Set both the start and the end colors to white. And also set the alpha value of the end color to zero. All right, let's increase the lifetime randomness to one. Let's collapse the process material and decrease the lifetime to 0.5. Then we set the explosiveness to 1, so the particles will come out all at once. I feel like the particles disappear too quickly, so let's increase the lifetime a little bit to 0.8. Let's set this particle to one shot, so it only happens once when the bullet hits the enemy. Notice that the emitting option is disabled automatically. Alright, we're done here. Now let's write the code. This apply damage function is going to run whenever a bullet hits this enemy. So let's write the code in it. Let's hold the control key and drag the GPU particle to the node into the script. Then let's call the restart function on it. This will stop the current loop and play from the start immediately. Then let's set the emitting property to true, otherwise nothing will happen. 
this emitting property will become false after one loop is finished. Since we've set the particle to one shot, it looks great. It's a rather simple particle effect, but you can tweak the parameters to make it fit your needs. Also, please consider checking out my Godot 2D course, since you have already made it this far here. And see you next time.